speakers of the 8th House of Representatives at the first plenary session of the House after their annual recess. One of the issues the lawmakers are expected to focus on is a proposed executive bill seeking emergency powers for President Muhammad Buhari, a proposal that has generated much discussion among Nigerians. But it appears the bill is yet to reach the lawmakers. Immediately the speaker receives it, uh, it will be passed on to my office. For now, I, 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 it has not yet arrived. Yeah, so by immediately we get it, it will spring into action. Other lawmakers say if such a bill is presented, it will be considered carefully. It depends on the content of the emergency power. If it's in tune with uh, what we think we just propel the economy without compromising uh, the, the ideals of the parliament, oh, definitely. I, so I see this parliament as a parliament that we definitely yield to anything that will bring succor to our people. If the resistors are there, our duty is to look at it, look at the pros and cons, and see what we have to do as a, as a parliament. We will know, do the needful. But importantly, we also want to advise that uh, if the power that's already embedded in the constitution is enough, that we need to do some adjustments in some places, maybe on an individual basis, not on a global scale. That those things are we're going to get to look at look at it. Now what powers does he want? What more powers does he want? He's the commander in chief, he's the chief executive officer, he's he's the head of head of state, he's everything you can think of. So I, to my mind, I don't think think he requires any more powers. What he needs to do is to work extra hard. Most of the lawmakers agree that the country needs to take active steps to revive the economy. But it's not clear if this bill will be sent to the National Assembly or if sent whether it will be passed by the National Assembly. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. Well, those are some of the several proposals being suggested, the proffered to see how we could get out of the recession. Well, to continue in that uh, particular realm, we're going over to Abuja where we've got our first guest today. Mark, man. Thank you, Chamberlain. We have with us in the studio uh, Mr. Sam Ikoko, who is a productivity consultant. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much. Good well, morning. We did see the National Assembly open up, uh, op come back, resume from recess yesterday, and you know we started talking about solutions because people will tell you that uh, depending on whom you lo whom you talk to, especially in government, uh, we've heard a stagflation from the CBN, we've heard a recession from the federal government and the National Bureau of Statistics. There is work to be done, and we must be moving ahead. Are we looking in the right direction from what we've heard in the national, from the National Assembly? Well, before now, I think what we have had has been the National Assembly has been trying to settle down and get its uh, processes and procedures in place. I'm hoping that during the vacation they had time to put heads together and decide to move the country forward. Uh, I'm hoping that now that they are back, uh, we can quickly begin to see progress uh, being made. Um, we're all anxious because before now not much has been said. It's not the sort of um, issues we were expecting to hear with the change agenda. But let's hope that common sense has prevailed and uh, a lot of um, conflicts will be resolved and we can get down to business. Mm. Before the National Assembly resumed from recess, we did see, uh, I don't know if you also got that um, message, did you, did you get a sense of conflicting signals in terms of how to get out of where it is we are? Yeah, well, yes I did. Uh, the, the first thing was, we're in a recession. It was like, oh my God, you know, we're in a recession. And then just before we absorb that information, we're here, we're coming out of a recession. I've never seen any country do it that fast, especially a country that has no production base, no adequate infrastructure, and so on and so forth. I also noticed that there seems to be a, a little bit of a conflict between populism and proper monetary po policy. Mm. You know, the Minister of Finance wants interest rates held down, but I think CBN has been close to the fire long enough to know the metrics to work with. So I think they should be allowed to um, do what they believe is best. Yeah, they can always change if it doesn't work. But to be teleguided at a time like this, I don't think that would be the best policy because of the uncertainty that it's causing. I mean, the unsung heroes of our economy are the angel investors, father, mother, uncle, brother, those people who give you little loans to start a business. And right now, the uncertainty is so much that even angel investors are standing still. 
That's really bad news. So we need to have some certainty. They shouldn't be discussing this on public television. They should closet together, agree on something, and walk around that. Mm. So <laughs> you just talk about angel investors, and one of the things that you also mentioned is productivity, which is mm -hmm. where you specialize. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at you know, our productivity level, some people will say that one of the areas that we've not focused on is productivity, and that the price of oil all of these years has helped us masquerade or mask that part of our lives. How do you think that we can actually get back on the path of productivity? Yeah, well, the first thing we have to understand, one, is oil itself is neither good nor bad. It's, it's, the, um, it's the way you choose to live your life based on it. It was free money for us. It was easy money for us. So we stopped thinking. Uh, for a country that was exporting cocoa, groundnuts, and too many things to talk about, we took the easy path. And now we have to pay the price. Um, getting out of it is not as difficult as it seems. It's just that we have to have people who want to move away from wanting to and actually doing. The country has to begin to um, focus on those aspects of the economy where we can see quick, um, quick results. I mean, there's no other way out of that. Oil itself could have helped us if we had used it well. Could have built all the basic infrastructure, could have improved our educational system, could have increased, improved our hospitals, but it was mostly stolen, mostly mismanaged. I don't know if they yet know how much oil we're selling or how much we're making. But I think that for a country like ours to be, when you understand that the oil reserves are finite, we should be seriously considering diversifying the economy. And we shouldn't be looking to government to do that. Government is divesting, government is privatizing, the message is clear. We can't expect government to be a welfare state. So we need the entrepreneurs, the startups, the small businesses to move. But, and these are the exact people we are starving of funds. So we're not yet ready to do business. Mm. Let's go to Lagos now. Let me, let me come in here now, because when you talk about, uh, you have chosen to term them the angels, and definitely I think uh, what the word out there now is that there's virtually anyone and everyone who is out there who doesn't have someone who's uh, asked for one form of handout or the other. So it tells you that we are truly in a dire strait. But now we should be talking about concrete steps. Uh, at diversifying the economy, but this is not the first time we've talked about diversification. Have we been able to look towards that direction as a nation? Well, that's exactly the point. We've been talking about diversification, but we've not done anything about it. Um, we have to look at our economy and, and see what works for us. We want foreign investment to come in, but what's foreign investment actually? Um, the statistics I may not be um, precise, but if you look at it directionally, I think in 2004, 80% of all direct foreign investment into China came from the Chinese living abroad. We have a very powerful diaspora, and we need to be able to harness that and begin to bring money into the economy. We need to do stuff. We need to go into agriculture. Everybody says that, but it's true. But you see, everybody I meet says it, but I have not seen anyone on a farm. Uh, we need to mechanize uh, agriculture. We can't keep subsidizing fertilizers. I mean, we can't. We really need to diversify. If you look at Lagos, for example, hotels are springing up everywhere. They're making money. The service sector is good. Look at the um, uh, IT sector. Where we have young, vibrant people who are doing their best to code without any help from the educational system. We have to go from wanting to diversify to actually diversifying. And I think there's a difference there. You know, if I could follow up on that as well, when you talked about them uh, getting into a closet and talk about some of these things, and then you also speak about us having a powerful diaspora. But one key factor to governize all of this is confidence. If the investors don't have confidence, how do they invest in the economy? So if they talk about these kind of things in terms of the policies, uh, perhaps they are trying to bring out openly or publicly, don't you think that if they get it right, that will inject the required confidence in the system. Well, that's precisely the reason why most of these discussions should be done in the closet. So that when we come out, we have a, we, we have a uniform statement to make, because that's what investors are looking at. If you were an investor in a power-generating company abroad, and you listen to the Minister of Finance, and you listen to CBN, and you listen to 
private people you might have met at seminars, you will never be able to decide to come to this country. And then when you add security, it's a new level of complexity. So what we do need to do is to agree on a path forward. It doesn't matter if it's difficult, but we need the certainty. And then investors can price their money and their goods and their expertise appropriately. Give them a mechanism to take their capital back out. Get Nigerians to come in but organize it. It's not someone in Chicago sending money to a brother in the village to build a house. Give them the instruments they need to pull these funds. We had the brain drain in the 70s. Well, that's fine. That's history. But today, we need the brain gain. And there are a lot of Nigerians abroad who want to come back home. Their children, maybe they don't want to come home, but they are nostalgic. They want to come home. They want to have homes. They want to have businesses. They want to have instruments to transfer their funds. They want to pay their mortgages abroad.